Since the dawn of agriculture, around 12,000 years ago, humans have bred animals for food, fiber, companionship, transportation, and, for much of history, to share the physical burden of farming. It's a partnership that hinges on a moment that is both commonplace and unique. Routine and magical. The first breath. Look at that. When they come out and take their first breath, everything has to work. It's like being launched into space, and if your spacesuit doesn't work, you're out of luck. And it's remarkable how such a high percentage of times that everything works the way it's supposed to. As director of the Maryland State Fair Birthing Center, Tom Hartsock gets to share the miracle of life with an audience that otherwise might never witness such an incredible moment. Another big. The retired University of Maryland animal science professor has logged decades researching birth, survival, and nutrition in pigs. Plus, he was raised on a dairy farm. Suffice it to say, he's seen his fair share of livestock births, many that went just how they should, and some that didn't. Litter-bearing animals have a more complicated process of getting out. With pigs, we have routine stillbirths. Pigs can have more than 13 or 14 piglets in a litter. That means up to eight hours of labor and a long way to travel for those at the end of the birth order. Bad things can happen during that trip, like the umbilical cord could break because it's stretched too much. The placenta could detach from the uterus and the oxygen supply for the baby is cut off. But when they come, they come quick. What we're seeing on the outside is abdominal contractions, abdominal muscles. Oh, there we <laughs> Sorry. There's no way I knew that was coming. In animals like cattle and horses, where you have a single birth, it's far less complicated. But there are still challenges. On dairy farms like MD Delight Dairy in Westminster, it takes near daily births to keep the milk flowing and the herd growing. When a baby gets stuck, it can be difficult for a farmer to pull it out alone. That's where this comes in. It's commonly called a cow jack. Hi, buddy. Attach chains to his feet, and I usually crank when the mom pushes, so that helps to push the calf out and get the calf out safely without hurting the mom or the baby. Getting them out safely, like this little guy, he's a big fella, is only part of the equation. Keeping them healthy is another. Since the 50s, vaccines have become cheaper and more effective. And, we got him out. and vaccinating a pregnant mother ultimately helps protect her babies because the mother has been exposed to diseases and built up immunity within her body, and she puts those proteins, those special proteins, that are circulating in her blood into her first milk, which is called colostrum. The babies, both cows, pigs, and humans, drink that colostrum, and those big proteins get absorbed directly into their bloodstream, just as if they had made them themselves. To drink 12 ounces of warm colostrum. That's why, in terms of so life events, from, the first like sip know, ranks up there with the first her. breath. Her colostrum is not his mom. <laughs> hey, baby, are you hungry? At Capricorn Farms in Washington County, San and dairy goats are raised for milk, cheese, and as breeding stock. Usually, they just know how to drink. Market coordinator and unofficial goat midwife, Elise Meckelberg, is tasked with making sure each newborn drinks 12 ounces of warm colostrum. Come on. Once they have 12 ounces of colostrum, they drink as much milk as they, cold milk as they want. So I'll just write down his number. Around here, early spring is lovingly called the baby blizzard thanks to baby after a white, fluffy baby. It's mid-March, and the total is up to 188. 
I mean, we call it baby blizzard because it's just like crazy babies everywhere. I think the most one day we had five girls have babies. So, and they can have one or two or three or four. Which means Elise might be feeding and processing one newborn. She's having another baby. While another goat is in labor in the maternity pen. The first time I knew one was about to go in labor, I like wouldn't leave. Like I brought my lunch out here. Someone was like, oh, just keep an eye on her. And I was like, I will not leave her. And after that, I've relaxed a lot. Because you, a lot of times like they'll scream if they're in trouble or they'll sort it out themselves. You just kind of get thrown into it. But I think that's the only way you can learn here, truly. Because you can't like watch a video or read a book and learn. Okay. Good girl! Good girl! Oh my god. It's amazing every time. Welcome! Elise may be busy, but at least she's mostly well rested. Christy Holden of Country Life Farm in Harford County where about 100 thoroughbred mares were due to give birth between January and April, can't say the same. Most mares will foal in the middle of the night, and it's just instinctual. It goes back to their days in the wild, where if they fold in the cover of darkness, predators wouldn't see the baby. It's been a busy past few days. So we had three babies born Saturday night, three on Sunday night, between Sunday night and Monday morning, one Monday night, one today in the afternoon, and one, let's see, today's, I don't even know what day it is anymore. Today's Wednesday. Tonight, the two expected to deliver, made of cotton and brusque. A lot of money is at stake when a racehorse gives birth to a future racehorse. Due dates are carefully calculated and pregnant mares are constantly monitored. This is my command center where I have all the cameras on screen for the night watch to be able to watch at night. And this is actually what is broadcasting on Ustream, which is our website that we broadcast the live feed on. As general manager, Christy doesn't miss a birth. I come in for all of them just because I love it, just because <laughs> if I'm a nervous Nelly and if, if, if something doesn't go right and I'm not here, then I'm going to never forgive myself. Except for earlier this afternoon, a baby was born unexpectedly in the field. Now Christy and the farm's veterinarian need to be sure he's gotten enough colostrum. And he's healthy, all's good, but we just ensure that he gets what he needs. We tube the colostrum into him so that we are sure he got enough. Back at the foaling stalls, it's getting late, or depending on how you look at it, early. Finally, around 2.30 a.m., there's some movement. And by 3 a.m., Made of Cotton's foal is here. It never gets old. Everyone's different, and just to be there for those first moments of life is, is really an incredible experience. This foal will go on to stand, walk, grow, and eventually race like he was bred to do. A future made possible by a safe, healthy birth.